Yeah, I mean, the plot thickens for sure. So what we learned earlier today from the Belgian public pro prosecutor when he was talking to the Belgian parliament was it appears that this investigation started as an investigation into Morocco, actually, not Qatar, into Morocco uh, trying to influence EU policy um, through bribes, through some other means, we don't know, and that they maybe discovered this other activity by Qatar in the process. Again, we don't really know the details here, but that's what seemed to be suggested by the public prosecutor today. Now, these rumors about Morocco have been going around here for several days. Uh, I've heard at least a couple of days ago that actually this investigation started out with Morocco and that the, the biggest fish are yet to come, and that's going to come in the Morocco influence and peddling. Um, so we'll see if that bears out. Uh, but the fact is, clearly, from the public prosecutor's comments today, there is a lot more to come here, and there's already been a lot. The other big development today, we had these reports from Le Soir here in Belgium and La Repubblica in Italy, uh, that they got a hold of court documents that say that Eva Kiley, who was that vice president of the European Parliament, arrested uh, in this sting, uh, that her boyfriend, Francesco Giorgi, is now confessing to having taken the money in order to uh, uh, unduly influence the legislative process, but he's saying that his girlfriend, Eva Kaili, is completely innocent. Again, that's according to Le Soir and La Repubblica. Uh, he's saying that she really had no idea this was going on, that she didn't know this cash was in their shared home. Uh, and he said that he, according to the reports, that he wants to make sure that the mother of their young child can go free. Now, how plausible is that? It's hard to say. Of course, we also have these reports that Kylie's father was caught trying to flee a luxury hotel here in Brussels with a suitcase full of cash. Uh, uh, what would be the explanation for that if she wasn't involved? Uh, we don't know. The other big question is what kind of influence would Georgi himself alone have been able to secure for the Qataris or for whatever country is involved here? Uh, he has connections to a former MEP, some of these NGO groups, uh, but uh, without that connection to his girlfriend, it's unclear what whoever was trying to do the bribing here would have been buying. And with uh, this uh, scandal widening, the uh, European Parliament uh, fast-tracking a pledge of reforms. Let's listen to uh, the chamber's uh, president. We're talking here about criminal corruption. We're talking about a situation where there will always be somebody willing to pay and somebody willing to be bribed. The minute that uh, we got the notice uh, from uh, the police authorities and the judicial authorities, we acted immediately with unprecedented speed. Uh, Dave Keating, what are the reactions to that? I mean, this is being viewed as a, a pretty big reform proposal that's on the table here. So Roberta Mazzola, the president of the European Parliament, came here to the European Council Summit of Prime Ministers and Presidents that's happening in Brussels right now. She spoke with the leaders, then she gave a press conference to us in the press and outlined for the first time these major reforms. They would be really major. Uh, former so, MEPs right now can just go into the parliament and wander around however they like. It looks like that should come to an end under this idea. Uh, they would also look at NGOs. They would look at the sources of their funding. They would look at what they're doing and possibly bar NGO access to the parliament if their funding sources look suspicious. Uh, they would also work with local authorities to maybe end the immunity that's enjoyed by members of the European parliament. They would obviously have to work with the governments of Luxembourg, Belgium and France on that. Uh, and also they, she would be looking to make the transparency register, which right now is voluntary. She wants to make that mandatory and she wants to end the loop poll for foreign countries, which right now don't have to register. These would be pretty big changes. She can't do them on her own. She said it's, they're going to come out with a proposal for this in January, and then this would have to be a decision of the Conference of Presidents. Some of these decisions would have to be taken with other institutions, like that uh, transparency register. It also involves the European Commission. But this would be a pretty big change to how the Parliament does business, and in particular, a big change to who has access to that building. And it's all, it's long been known 
that the access to the building is something that uh, uh, lobbyists really, really treasure. That was the whole point of the transparency register. It was supposed to track who was in that building. But of course, other people will say, well, you can lobby outside the building. So how effective is any of this? That's the key question, I think. But we'll get the details of that in January. If it's like Metzola was describing, it would be fairly significant change. Dave Keating